time for some mailbag. Now, I've got a few things here. One of them sounds a bit interesting, it's also a bit concerning. So we'll start with the simple stuff first, and we'll get to that if I'm figure out to get past the simple stuff. Right. As usual, be links down below. Hopefully, if I'm able to do it, uh, power cable, Zend adapter. That's fine. Uh, this is a power adapter thing. So, what's this thing do? This is uh, output 7.4 volts, two amps. Input up to 240, which is fine. Which is what I want. Little mini DC jack here. What size is that? I wonder. Anyway, and here is the main thing. This is basically a battery substitute for my camera, at least in theory, that's what it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to plug in there so I can use a DC supply of mains to power my DSLR camera, which I'll be using for doing videos once I get my stuff all set up properly. Uh, so Here's the camera I've got right now, and let's get the thing out. In theory, this adapter will fit, not in this case, but in the actual um, bottom of the camera itself. So in this case, I won't actually go in there because it's got mounts. So I might have to take the thing off. I've got this extra hand grip here for the extra battery, which I might have to take off, uh, which will be with this. Hold on, so look. So the theory has it that this should plug into here and lock in. It does. That's looking promising. And um, power the camera. Let's have a look at that and see what happens. The camera's got all kinds of weird security things on there, like um, if the if it's not using an original battery, or say it's not using an original battery, and you know, ask you if you're sure you really want to use it, and that sort of stuff, it's like, oh god, you know, in order to make you buy Canon batteries, I hate that sort of crap. It's actually incentive for me to work around it and find a way of faking that message. Anyway, let me get there. Let's just try and get this up. Power this thing up and see what happens. I'll get the cable untangled. Right. Plug it in. Right, what happens when I turn it on? Does it work? Does it not work? Mm hmm. I'm assuming there's power. I'm pretty sure it's plugged in. Mm hmm. Is there power on that thing? Well, this isn't a good start, is it? Uh, why did it not go? Why not go? Just like mm -hmm. when I go first, let's check the AC lead and see if this actually works because it could be a bad AC lead. Okay, that's one AC box. Oh, oh, need both leads, not one of them. Can't, can't measure voltage, one lead. Stick one in there, stick one in there. And see if I'll get AC. And yet, 240 volts AC. So, yeah, there's AC getting into it. No. So, I'll check this piece. Can I check this piece? <laughs> hmm. Well, it's better to be a TC, and I need something to 
probe in there. I need a little bit of wire. Oh, let's just find myself something. It's not very successful, is it? The very first piece of the mail bag doesn't really work anyway. Let's just get one of those wire off cut things. Shove that in. Yeah. Shove that in there. Seven point six volts. So there's power to this piece. So the actual power supply part is working. So what's wrong with the battery part? Why is that been not working? The probe on there I'm getting seven more six volts. So that should be going. Why isn't that going? Should be working. But it doesn't. That's very interesting. Go to this together, that's some more. So after that last unsuccessful piece, which I'm guessing it's probably due to uh, some restrictions that Canon's put on the use of batteries. I might have to decode the uh, information that batteries send the camera and Budget, book your way around it. Figure out how to hack the thing. But is that obviously what can want? Hack it and then release it, dude, body. Right, uh, this is two, four, six, seven. I thought it was supposed to be more than that. Anyway, this is supposed to be a little set of drills. Really small ones. For cleaning nozzles on 3D printers. I can't remember how many are supposed to be in this set now. But there's seven in there. Might be right, I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. But Anyway, a little set of drills. Right, next thing. I think I need a sharper blade. Obviously, printer filament. Now, that is some transparent. What's that one? Transparent PLA. And this one. It's some grey PLA. I haven't tried the printing with PLA yet. It's mostly easier than ABS, and I've been successfully using ABS, so. That should be easy. Now this one's a little bit concerning because I ordered a glass plate for the 3D printer which sits on the bed to, so you've got a nice dead level surface which is fairly easy to get items from, back off it when you print it. Now this arrived. Now it says the glass plate but the sound is a bit disturbing and it's a bit flexible. So I'm not quite sure if it actually is it, and it's been mislabeled, or if it's actually been smashed to buggery in, on the way here, which will be unsurprising since it's in a bag instead of a box. So let's open it up and see what's in it. It could be something else completely. Mhm. Mm it's kind of like a square shape. And about the same size as the piece of glass I'm supposed to be getting. Hmm. I'm not quite sure I'd expect a bubble wrap to make it not break. You know, bending is what breaks glass. Oh, look, there we go. Broken glass. How stupid was that? So, 
I hope you like my nice my new glass bed for my 3D printer because I think it's brilliant. Hmm. That's a bit of a fail. Oh well, that's in the mailbag for now. Um. Yeah. Um, maybe it's best not to buy glass sheet from people in China because they don't seem to have an idea of how to pack it. The filament is packed better than the glass. What does that say? All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Subscribe and click the bell icon and that sort of stuff. And yeah. Okay. So here's my bag on. I've got several items to go through. So we'll start with this. Now this was interesting. It took ages to get here, and it was bouncing between. Um, I don't know, depots. Um, it went between the two depots back to forwards a few times in France. For some reason, it went backwards and forwards a few times. And set one of them for a week, then went back to the first one, and then finally it got here. Took a while. And, you know, so TNT couriers, hmm, maybe it's not the best after all. Um, now, this, the postage is actually more than the item. So the item was 55, um, was it euros? 55 euros, and I ended up having to pay 65 euros postage to have it take what three weeks to arrive, something like. That. So anyway, I suggest not using TNT couriers based on my previous experience with them. Anyway. Did a, better, did a better job getting you here, I would have been saying the opposite instead. So this is a Roden Swartz manual. As you can see, it's wrapped nicely. I don't know if that's original wrapping or not. Or if that's from something else. But it's a CMU 200 manual. Now, those that know me know that I always get manuals for bits of gear I have. Which means that there's a CMU 200 coming. In fact, it should have been here a few days ago. Um, and that hasn't arrived yet. I'm wondering if this is an original seal. It looks like it's never been used. It does, doesn't it? It looks like it's never been used. This is virgin. Wow. Okay, it's even better than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um. Let me see how that cut in the papers. Wow, this is like it's virgin bloody documentation. It's never even been opened. That's incredible. Um, service manual. Oh, it's all still stuck together like, from the the print. It's never never been opened before. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, brand new manual. That's a score, isn't it? That's well worth the effort. Okay. Um, so, so this is the service manual for the CMU two hundred. And uh, I'm not going to bore you too much with putting it together, I think, but um, hopefully you get the idea. I'm going to record you more of that, it's going to take me a while. Okay, so there you go, it's all installed, and there we go. So, chapter 5 is the main, what's the interesting thing here? So, section 5 documentation. Which is all of the fold out diagrams. If I can get one. It's just beautiful. Very nice. I'm actually really happy that I've got a, an original manual in mint condition, unopened. You know, that is awesome. Um, it's like, you know, geek porn, I suppose. So, yeah. 
all the connections. But yeah, it's um very very good. I'm very happy with this. It's got these interconnection drawings in here. So yeah, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, very happy. I don't know about circuit diagrams, I haven't seen circuit diagram yet, but um, I think it's just overview stuff. Does it say what the circuit diagrams are in here? It tells you the part numbers, which could be handy. CMU spare parts mentions there, so, and there's another yellow page here, it's like another total page, so let's have a look at this. Circuit diagram parts list. It does have circuit dog in then. Yeah, layout, interconnection diagrams. All very handy stuff. Now, so I've got, I purchased CMU 200, which is going to be here soon. And um, we shall see what condition it's in. Because at the moment, I don't actually know um, parts lists. Does it have actual circuitry? This is just bulk stuff right now. Hmm. Anyway, hopefully there's circuit diagrams in here. It's all just inter interconnects in that bit. We'll see. Maybe there'll be something somewhere. But uh, still, it's very nice to get a original mint condition manual. I'm so happy with that. The only problem is whenever you get binders like this, these technical manuals for bits of equipment, um, if they're in this kind of binder system, they never seem to have the binders quite big enough. They're always like, oh, yeah, this all fit, it fits in there. But you actually need enough to actually flip the things over. I have some issue with equipment at work. Um, the manuals aren't actually big enough for the equipment. If you put any appendums in there yourself or do the machine modifications and that gets put in there, um, you know, you bulk out and it just doesn't fit anymore. Anyway, that's just a bit of a rant. So, awesome stuff. Alright, see what's in this one. Looks pretty basic, doesn't it? Now let's try and get into it. No, I still haven't changed the blade of my knife yet. It's a layer of cork, which is a little bit worse for wear for the puzzle system, but it probably doesn't matter. Um, silver leaves of cork. Now this I purchased this to go on the back of my 3D printer heat bed. All right. um, I'm probably going to have to cut it to shapes and stuff to stick it on, but the idea of doing this is to make sure the heat bed can stay as hot as possible without losing heat through the bottom. I want to, all the heat to go upwards and be radiated upwards um, to allow it to heat more efficiently and, and easier. So I purchased this. Um, it wasn't very expensive, I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't much at all. Um, you know, it's probably five bucks or something like that, if that. So, yeah, if you've got a heated bed in your, in your printer and you need all the heating power it can give you, um, like if you're doing ABS and, like, and your heated bed only does 110 the best, you know, I can barely get there, like mine, then um, stick that on. Um, yeah, see, the, see my Ender 3, can, it can do 110, it does get there, but it struggles to get there, so I'm hoping this will just be enough to do the job and get it there, just to sort that last little bit out. So this is a small little package, let's see what's in here. Find the join. <laughs> okay, um, well it's interesting to actually cut it out. Well you can't put the packaging can you? That wasn't going to arrive damaged. So these are some more um, iPhone 6S dock connectors. These are in grey, both in grey, so this is probably one I should have put in actually. You would have maybe seen the video by now where I did the iPhone 6S and repaired this assembly. This is the whole replacement assembly, so you've got this, the headphone jack, dual microphones, dock connector, there's an antenna here as well for something, I'm not sure what it's for, it's Bluetooth or what, I'm not sure. Um, and that's all on that assembly. 
and um, that flex cable there as you can see so I already did the phone repair but I, bought, I purchased a few of these from different a couple of different sellers um, in case one was no good then at least you got another one sort of thing so it happens I've had that before I purchased saying it the item didn't work and I got it from somewhere else and it's fine so um, it happens you know you can get you know damaged cables and stuff but um so I hedge my bets like these sort of things I mean these connectors I'm always worried about how sturdy these connectors are headphone jacks especially since I use my headphone jack a lot on this phone um, to plug the microphone in eventually it's going to fail because it will wear and tear in which case I've got parts to fix the phone I'm recording on right now which is an iPhone 6s okay um, right let's see what's in here this is a really good question oh right now I know what they are A bit of care to make sure it wouldn't come apart in post, which is nice. Now I've got to get it open. So these are lenses for my new Canon camera. Right, so these are macro lenses. So eventually I'm going to record on my new camera. So these are magnification lenses, so we'll see how that goes on the, on the camera. Um, the screw onto the existing lens. And so we've got a one uh, times one or plus one. So I guess that's doubles of magnification. Plus two, plus four, and a plus ten. I don't know if you can use them all at once. Don't know. Maybe use it this way. Maybe. Um, so yes, that's the idea. Of that is to allow me to have. Interesting. That's not like a filter. Um, maybe that's all it is as a filter. So maybe that isn't a multiplier. That just no, he's doing something. It's magnifying slightly. Anyway. Um, yeah, waffling a bit. So these will go on my camera. So I might uh, try those on my lens and just um, see how they go. If I can get the thing screwed back on again, it'd be great. Um, and see if they are what I need or not. They may not be appropriate. I don't know until I try to try them out. But, uh, yeah, cool. So I thought I'd get my camera out and actually have a look. Now this is uh, zoom in, zoom in a bit. Let's see what this lens does when I put it over the front. It's amplifying very slightly, isn't it? We're zooming slightly. Let's try and get a um, better shot or something. Get it in the top corner. It's not doing much, is it? Maybe it's just filtering a bit. Maybe. Let's look at that. Let's look at the next one. So the plus two. These are fairly cheap, these lenses, they weren't that expensive, so let's see how we go. Now let's do the same thing again, get it in the corner. Yeah, it is changing it slightly. Bear in mind it's not actually screwed on, so it might be a little bit different. Let's try the next one. If I can get that unscrewed. Of course, if I screwed it onto the front, it might be a little bit different again. But so, yeah, that is definitely changing it. Here we go. Trying to get a bit closer, you can see it. Yep. So if I need to get slightly more zoom, so this one here is the plus four, apparently. So I screwed it on the front, and yep, here we go. So I need to zoom in a lot more. Maybe it'll work. If it will focus, that'd be good. Why am I not focusing? I'll, I'll still have to figure out how to use this bloody camera. Give them. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Ah, oh, here you go. 
Some bloody manual focus. Of course it is. I was using that last time. Here we go. Come on. Now is this, is this going to affect the focusing? Yes it is. Yeah, we'll see. Here we go. Take that back off again. But dropping it would be good. I'll zoom in manually. And it can focus just fine. So there may be an issue with those as far as focusing goes. Zoom out. This one's a times 10. It's having trouble focusing. So if I do manual focus. Oh, look at that. So yeah, cheap ones, not necessarily good. But then close up is working a lot better. So if I do a close up view of something, there you go. Let's do that. Let's just try to auto focus on something close instead. Oh, look at that, that's fine. Um, yeah, alright. Yeah, so I can auto focus on something close. Yeah, okay. And that is really close, actually. It's, it's not bad. So let's just try that f times one lens again, or well, plus one. Um, I'm not quite sure what that designation means. I'm not a photography buff, as it were, even though I do YouTube videos, I'm not really a photographer. That's not screwing in very nicely, that one. Seems to stop about halfway. Let's see if that's an issue or not. Yes, that's about the same distance away. And then it can auto focus. Just now compare that to standard. Struggling. There we go. So yeah, have to be slightly further away. Anyway, we'll play around with those in time. Sort of demo them a little bit. Alright, next thing. I usually chat links in below for various items if I remember to do it, if I get time. Um, if I don't put a link down there and it's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll try and dig it out. That was pretty fast. I purchased a second battery for this Canon camera, which I did just now. All right, this thing. Um, this is an original Canon one, apparently. Because I purchased a thing which is on the shelf over there somewhere, which is a double battery unit. It's like an extra handle goes on the bottom, and it's got some extra buttons on it and stuff, so you can actually use the camera this way around instead. Um, so it's got a proper handle, and it actually takes two batteries, they so double your recording time. All right. Um, And, but it came with two aftermarket batteries, which the Canon camera recognises as not being Canon camera batteries, and refuses to tell you a capacity. All right, that's with their way of doing it. Oh, it let you use them, but you won't actually let you see the capacity of the batteries, so you can't see how much power you got left. But I did find the workaround for that is to actually um, install one Canon battery and one aftermarket battery at the same time. Then it gave you a capacity because they're just in parallel. Um, well, it's all stuck together really well. Um, but the other problem with that is that the um, the, fact the original Canon charger will not charge the aftermarket battery. So you need an aftermarket charger as well, which is what I don't currently have. So I can't charge those batteries up. So I thought, right, what the hell, I'll just get another Canon battery then. And this is supposed to be an original Canon. We shall find out what the camera thinks, shall we? See if the, Canon, the camera agrees it's an original Canon battery. 
it looks very similar. I mean, this one's definitely original, all right? Um, it's got some different markings. So it is different. Maybe a fake Canon battery. Um, let's find out. Well, it recognises it, it's fine. It seems to think it's okay. Assuming I didn't put the wrong battery back in. Let's just pop that back out. Have a look. It's actually got a sensor on this flap, which is why I did say the other day it was the uh, mains powered adapter for this thing. But because I couldn't close the flap, it wouldn't power up. Fine. So that's okay. It's the original Canon one. Awesome. So I've now got two original Canon batteries, which I can then put into that handpiece and use that. Um, if I am going to be doing videos out and about, um, which is possible, so that's cool. All right, this is. Let's see what this is. Polycarbonate filament. So I wanted to try printing polycarbonate. I don't know if I can do it on my printer. I guess I'll find out. Um, I'm not sure if the temperature range. Does it say anything on the box about temperatures? It doesn't, does it? Sometimes I do. Um, no, it doesn't say anything on here. But sometimes the temperature range on polycarbonate is a bit higher, and um, I may not be able to print on it. It's a nice spool, isn't it? Nice design. Very nice. Um, so one kilo, 1.75 mil polycarbonate filament. The reason I got this because it's nice and strong. It's a very strong material. So if I need something structural, which is what I've already done in a way, I've already printed some structural parts out, um, which have been okay, but I don't 100% trust them. Um, then I might be able to do polycarbonate and, and do anything like that. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, this is also my Ender 3. And polycarbonate isn't listed as one of the materials it's capable, compatible with. Um, but then it's not listed for nylon either. And I haven't tried nylon. I haven't tried the polycarbonate yet. I've got both, but I will be trying them at some stage. Next time I need something which is going to be, again, structural, which cannot fail, like a handle, you know. Um, I'll try nylon, because nylon should bend before it breaks. Um, so I'll try it for that. And I'll also try it the polycarbonate as well. And we'll, I might do some strength tests and things like that and see how it goes. But then the... the um, I've still got a lot of learning to do with that printer and, and learning how to get nice prints out of it. I'm still figuring it out. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. And last thing for now. Another roll of filament. Pet G. Now, Pet G's also got a good reputation. Um, nothing on the outside, but I'm saying it's Pet G. Some unknown manufacturer, who knows who made it. Um, is it any good? I've got no idea. But I've I've um, I was doing a live stream a period of time ago now and uh, mentioning about the 3D printer. Come what's doing now? Doing something. And um, someone on the live stream who's into 3D printing um, was mentioned they use Petchy, and I've seen it mentioned a lot on, on YouTube videos about you know a nice material to use because it's quite strong things like that and uh, relatively easy to use. So. I'll be giving that one a go too. So I've now got ABS, which I've been using so far. I've only been using ABS so far. I've now got um, nylon, which I haven't tried yet. Polycarbonate, I haven't tried yet. And now I've got some PETG, which also I haven't tried yet, obviously, because I've only just got it. So, but in fact, I've been using polycarbonate, uh, not polycarbonate, ABS so far successfully. Um, although I am having some printing issues with it because, because it is wet. It's not, I haven't ha been using it dry. I haven't been drying it. So I need to sort out a, uh, a drying system. I need to set up a box and stuff like that and keep them all in so it's all dry. Um, I need to do that. Um, that's something I'll get to eventually. I need to make something for that. All right, so I've got a mail bag item here. Let's have a look. Let's see what's in it. Although, I've got a knife. Okay, it says rewrapped by Courier Post. Great, so it's also had an issue with the packaging when it came from Amazon. 
it's already open. Um, they did a great job wrapping it then, didn't they? So, not only did Amazon do a rubbish job of packaging it, so did Courier Post when they supposedly fixed the packaging. That was great, isn't it? I complain about that. You know, look, obviously they try to tape it up to fix it, because it's obviously got torn. But, bloody hell, even that's been rubbish. But anyway, I ordered a couple of books to improve my knowledge a little bit. Um, so, getting started with 3D printing, well, you know, I've got, I've got a lot to learn about 3D printing. I mean, I know about plastics, but 3D printing is a little bit of a different beast. Um, you know, there's some tips in there which will help me learn a bit faster. And 3D printing failures. Um, I sort of mentioned somewhere. But it's, um, yeah, I can't remember where I saw it now. I think it's a YouTube channel. And um, the idea of this is that if you've got issues, hopefully it will help you to figure out what's going on with it. So a bit of problem solving. So I thought this would be quite a good little thing to have too. So I've got issues with something happening. I could have a look through here and see if I can find out why if I can't figure out myself. So, and those are both from Amazon, but yeah, maybe she should go somewhere else and get it so they actually package it properly. I don't know. Um, I think I only bought two books, but I'm not sure I didn't miss one. Yeah, yeah they're both, both there. That's fine. So, that's all good. Let's see what's inside this. Cloth tape. Um, I think I saw this on is it Vault Log's channel. I think Vault Log had some cloth tape, and um, it sort of reminded me that actually, yeah, I, there's been times when I've wished I had some cloth tape as well. So, a bit, bit like something tape, but it's obviously just cloth. So, it's, if you want to rip up some wires to help protect them so they're not getting abrased, you know, for rubbing on something, or you know, really improve the abrasion resistance of the wires so you don't short them out, bundle up with that, you know. So, not particularly exciting, but handy thing to have. Now the last thing, I'm not even going to open this. I know what's in it. Um, the glass plate. Okay. Now you may remember in a previous mail bag not too long ago, I ordered a glass bed for my 3D printer as an alternative method of, you know trying to get it flat and stuff like that so I was going to try that and see how it goes so I ordered a glass plate and it was all smashed when it arrived and um, this is another glass plate again it's all smashed so I'm not going to open it because there's no point because it's just it's destroyed now when I, when I um, ordered the last one they they said I'll, they'll resend it send a new one and I told them, put it in a box, because a bag will not protect it. I said, it has to go in a box. And I sent it in a bag again. I expected it to survive. So it's broken again. So I've given them hell again. Um, and given a crappy review and told them how stupid they are. Called them morons, because I told them it would happen again if they'd put it in a bag. Sure enough, it smashed again. So I'm not going to open it. Um, so... I won't be putting a link to this on my description down below. I won't be doing that because there's no point. Because I'd say do not buy this from this people. Because there's no point. Because the guy's an idiot. You know, or guy or girl, whoever it is. Um, they are obviously stupid because I tell them it's broken because it's not adequately packaged. And they package it again exactly the same way. And it, you, the predictable happens it's broken. You know, ah, oh, definition of stupidity, isn't it? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Anyway, so thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Um, much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting me to help me buy items for mailbag or projects to work on, you know, bits of test equipment to repair, that kind of thing. Any money goes goes towards that is helpful because it is expensive buying test equipment to do repairs on, especially if I'm not actually going to be using it that much or 
it's something I could do without. Or, you know, as in most cases, you can do without things. Um, so having a Patreon supporters and people that donate to me via PayPal is, is very helpful. So if you're interested in helping support me and um, but, you know contribute to the channel, um, then please check out my Patreon page, my PayPal donation options, which are down in the description down there. Click on the Show More tab, this is down there. So um, thank you very much for not supporting me and or even giving more support you know give, getting some comments is also good as well comments in the videos prefer positive comments and negative ones if you do want to be you know give constructive criticism then please do um i do want to hear what people find annoying or whatever but do it in a nice way i don't want to hear shitty comments because that's just not good for anyone it just makes me not want to do it anymore but that's not something i want to go to i enjoy making videos enjoy showing what i'm playing around with and um I've certainly been stepping up what I've been doing um, over the time I've been doing the video. So um, it was just originally I was going to video bits of what I'm doing at the time. I was, you know, if I'm working on something, I'll do a video of that and slap it up, which was going to be rather random and erratic. And I've ended up basically turning my life into doing YouTube videos and buying things and trying to create content to keep you guys entertained. Um, so. Yeah, if you want to support me, that's great. Because um, that certainly be appreciated. Because this is an expensive hobby. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Click the bell icon. Bye.